హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు బయో షార్ట్స్ వే బ్యాక్ వెన్ యూ వర్ ఇన్ ఎ స్కూల్ యూ స్టడీడ్ అబౌట్ కార్బన్ సైకిల్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ సిగ్నిఫికెన్స్ ఇన్ ఈకో సిస్టమ్ ఫంక్షనింగ్ లెట్స్ డూ ద రివిజన్ వన్స్ అగైన్ బిఫోర్ వీ గెట్ టు ద టాపిక్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వీడియో we all have studied that the carbon cycle is nature's way of recycling carbon atoms which is the backbone of all life on earth it is an important biogeochemical cycle which involves the flow of carbon in various forms gaseous liquid or solid carbon among all the components of environment it is agreed now that the main cause of global climate change is the anthropogenic increase in greenhouse gas concentrations in the earth's atmosphere in the previous video we discussed about the carbon footprints and how the reduction in carbon footprints can prevent or halt the adverse effects of climate change among all the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide is the principal greenhouse gas responsible for global warming its concentration in the atmosphere is the result of a cycle between different carbon pools therefore in order to understand the long term impact of imbalance in the global carbon cycle it is extremely important to have a clear understanding of earth's carbon pools i'm neelam mishra join me here to learn more about carbon pool so what are carbon pool and what is the meaning of carbon stock and what are the types of carbon pool present on earth surface when we view earth as a system all the components of environment namely atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere and biosphere can be referred to as carbon pools or carbon reservoirs because they act as storage house for large amounts of carbon just like the swimming pool which is filled with water carbon pool is filled with inorganic or organic forms of carbon by definition a carbon pool is a system or a reservoir that has the capacity to both store and release carbon the absolute quantity of carbon held within a carbon pool at a specified time is called carbon stock and the amount of carbon in these carbon pools is measured in gigatons now let's move on to the types of carbon pools on earth basically the earth's carbon pools can be grouped into four very broad categories that have great relevance to the overall carbon cycle these carbon pools are earth crust ocean atmosphere and terrestrial ecosystems so now let's discuss each one of these carbon pools the uppermost layer of the earth is called crust which is the largest carbon pool and can be subdivided into two categories the first an inorganic reservoir of carbonate rocks This is the largest amount of carbon present on earth and is stored in the form of sedimentary rocks which are formed by hardening of mud containing organic matter into shale over geological time or by the collection of calcium carbonate particles from the shells and skeletons of marine organisms into limestone dolomite and chalk the second is a fossil reservoir of organic matter 
which contains fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas. Carbon is stored as hydrocarbon in these fossil fuels formed over millions of years from ancient living organisms under intense temperature and pressure. Due to anthropogenic activities like burning of fossil fuels, the carbon from this pool is introduced into another carbon pools unnaturally. The second largest carbon pool are oceans. There are three subdivisions of ocean pools. One, living matter mostly found near the surface consisting of roughly 3 gigatons of carbon. Second, the carbon which is dissolved throughout the ocean. And third, the sedimentary matter present in the ocean beds containing mostly carbonates. A much smaller amount of carbon is located near the ocean surface that undergo exchange rapidly with the atmosphere through physical processes such as carbon dioxide dissolving into the water forming carbonate and bicarbonate and biological processes such as growth, death and decay of planktons and other aquatic organisms. Although most of this surface carbon cycles rapidly, some of it can also be transferred by sinking to the deep ocean pool where it can be stored for a much longer time. Now come to the third carbon pool that is atmosphere. The atmosphere contains most of the carbon in the form of carbon dioxide with much smaller amount of methane and various other hydrocarbon compounds. Although this is considerably less carbon when compared with the carbon contained in oceans or crust, atmospheric carbon pool is of vital importance because of its influence on the greenhouse effect and climate. The relatively size, small size of the atmospheric carbon pool is also very sensitive to disruptions caused by increase in sources or sinks of carbon. So what are sources? Sources are those which add carbon to the atmosphere, whereas sinks remove carbon from the atmosphere. And finally, the terrestrial ecosystems. This pool contains carbon in the form of plants, animals, soil and microorganisms. Most of the carbon in terrestrial ecosystem exists in organic forms comprising of above ground matter and below ground organic matter. Plants exchange carbon with the atmosphere rapidly through the process of photosynthesis in which carbon dioxide is absorbed and converted into new plant material. And through respiration, some fraction of the previously captured carbon dioxide is released back to the atmosphere as a product of metabolism. Forest trees have the greatest ability to store large amounts of carbon. The most prevalent form of carbon in the soil is organic carbon derived from dead plant materials and microorganisms broken down by enzymatic decay process. The decay process also releases carbon back to the atmosphere because the metabolism of these microorganisms eventually decomposes most of the organic matter to carbon dioxide in oxygenic environment or methane in the absence of oxygen. Each of these pools exchange carbon with one another and constitute global carbon cycle which monitors the exchange of carbon throughout Earth's carbon pools 
or reservoirs and keep a perfect balance in addition the carbon pools on earth naturally act as both sources and sinks if all the sources are equal to all sinks the carbon cycle is said to be in equilibrium and there is no change in the size of carbon pools over time unfortunately that is not happening adverse human actions are affecting the natural carbon cycle causing the imbalance in carbon pools resulting in global warming frequent droughts frequent floods extreme drought extreme floods ocean acidification increase in sea levels and overall climate change the important question that we should ask here is can we revert the imbalance in global carbon cycle the answer is yes of course we cannot do that overnight or even over the next several decades well if we wish we can always slow down the rate and limit the amount of greenhouse gas emissions added unnaturally in the atmospheric and biospheric carbon pools to reattain the perfect balance in the global carbon cycle so this is all about carbon pools in the next video we will find out how carbon is exchanged between different pools what are the processes and mechanisms by which carbon cycling takes place if you have any question please feel free and write in the comment box keep watching more informative videos and shape your bright future thank you thank you for your time and attention